uh, welcome back. That's to not how we do it. I'm no, back welcome back to one thousand one billion miles trying for your diet. I just asked these to go get into the shot, and they decided to get really close into the shot. So we have another beer here. It's the last of the three Jolly Pumpkin beers we've got. Uh, this is first brewed in two thousand four, eight percent, and it is. Oro de Calad Bazaar. No, that is that. Where are you from exactly, James? Uh, I am from Mexico. This is bad. You are from Nicaragua. Via Croydon. No, I'm bringing this, I'm bringing this in. All this stuff. Okay, stuff. How, would you, how would you pronounce it then? I know, I'd say Calabaza, but I don't know in Mexican Spanish if that's it the mean, It means it. golden pumpkin, right? Uh, it does mean golden pumpkin. Yeah, in, in Spanish. So, uh, it's kind of irrelevant because it's from America, so... <laughs> just get that in shot. Uh, so, should we have a look at the bottle first? The bottle, it's uh, some sort of golden chalice being held up. Still the beer, the Art Nouveau kind of uh, yeah, style. Yeah, it's, it's very, very fancy. I think it's very so nice. It's, it's quite busy. Would you like to read the story on the back there? Okay, so... Uh, luckily, this isn't in Spanish. Aged in large oak casks, as usual for this brewery, and re-fermented in the bottle... Oro de Calabaza is brewed in the Franco-Belgian tradition, obviously, even though it's Spanish, uh, of special gold nails, spicy and peppery with a gentle hop bouquet, and the beguiling influence of wild yeast. I love the, term, the word beguiling. Beguiling. Well, I had that problem reading the back of the last one, which was definitely like La Roja. And it was <laughs> La just Roja! Like, and it says Franco-Belgian tradition, like, is it La Roja? <laughs> and then this one is confirmed, thank God. <laughs> it was. So if you'd like to crack this open and pour, and would you like to read the tasting Ooh, notes? I would love to I read the tasting I notes. I can't so get the teeth under. I can't get it in. There we go. <laughs> you say, there we go, but let's go for a second. Little... Right. Aptly named. Starship Enterprise works again. <laughs> yep, yeah, just about. Aptly named, or the Calabatha uh, pours Calabatha. a pale gold in colour. Reminiscent of champagne, a dling effervescence dances in the mouth. Ooh, hello, there's something emphasizing a pleasant, that. slightly sour apple and pear tang that is highlighted by generous, spicy and peppery aromas and flavours. Oh god, look at the size of that! What well, something's alive, show it to the camera. Something's a, alive in the bottom of that first I, I did see something in the cap, like when you took the lid off, I was like, it's <laughs> alive. As a yeast baby alive. Yeah, it's, not, it's more than a, that's not a yeast baby, that's an actual lump. So yeah, but you, I saw that in the in the in the rim of the bottle when you when you poured when you opened it. And did, I you, just, did you finish that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, right. Sorry, we got distracted Can, by by babies. Yeah, yeah, your babies. <laughs> I'll have the one with the yeast baby in it. No, like, that's Quinnis glass. It's this fine. is mine. Yeah, I've you, just realised, and I think I've drink. done this before. <laughs> I think I've noticed this before, but I've noticed it again, and I don't know if I've noticed it on camera. Cheers, Gil. It says on this glass. Now. No, 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 no. Cheers, Jill. Cheers, Jill. These are all beer festival glasses. Oh, I uh, presumed it was a, a, a Phil Gill situation. No, ah. no, no, no. Uh, do you not know about Jill? I don't know about Jill. Do I know? Uh, Jill Ford uh, was a long-standing, long-serving member of the Reading and Midbox Camera uh, Committee for many years, who sadly died of cancer a few years ago. So uh, she was a well-known volunteer at the Reading Beer Festival, so we thought appropriate to uh, celebrate Jill's life uh, was the following beer festival to put Cheers Jill on the oh, glasses which yeah. you may or may not be able to mm, see probably not that probably much not but uh, there we go yeah so that, that's it that's, it's not it's not Cheers Phil Gill <laughs> I just thought uh, it was Stolen Phil's glass and that's, uh, that's no, no, much no. more no 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 that right. was an official beer festival what glass what actual fuck is that I don't know what, what that little it's, it's, it's even got bubbles do you want cloudy or yeast baby that's not is that a yeast baby that's just well I think it's a yeast baby dried up around Okay. Well, shall, shall we just go for the? I'm going to go for the. Let's I'm look at it first. It's quite well, cloudy. I mean, for uh, well, I mean, yours speak, is the cloudiest. Speak for yourself. Oh, here we go. There we go. On the cap, there's still some, some gubbins. Yeah, res- I was going to say there's resid- there's some residue. Well, shall we go for the smell then? See what I'm not that worried about. It. You're not the one drinking it. It smells sour. <laughs> it smells. Don't don't talk to me. About <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. Nice clear beer with a thing in the bottom. Yeah. I think I'm the winner. Maybe it's a slow release mechanism. <laughs> it makes it cloudy as the night goes on. It smells sour. Should we go for the taste then? It does smell a tad sour. It's basically, yeah, well, it's, they always say sour beer, don't yeah. they? So. Well, cheers. Mm. I'm definitely getting the champagne part. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, very champagne y. Mm, that's nice. I'm not getting much on the back end now. I'm really no. getting the front and nothing. 
it's very dry. It's in, Ooh. runs around your mouth a little bit, disappears like a ghost. How many times have you eaten a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Not drunk one very often. I normally, I normally chow down on a solid ghost. <laughs> Surely we've all drunk ghosts because we've all drunk Stay Puffed. That's true, we've all drunk ghost. This Stay Puffed wasn't a ghost. Though. Yeah. I thought Stay, Stay Puff was pretty solid. He destroyed things. I thought ghosts were sort of wafty. Yeah, it's still a ghost. It's still a ghost. It just happens to manifest itself. Well, no, it was he though? Because it was actually no. It's, I think it's I just, his worst. It's, it's the first thing he thought of manifesting. It's not a ghost. In reality. Yeah. No, he was. I, I think technically, ghost. technically, I'm correct here. He's not. A ghost. <laughs> I think. I think Gwyneth's right. Yeah. That's okay. the second time today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will. Speaking of this, I will be. Re- Soon I will be for break. <laughs> I will be reviewing. I guess not. Um, I will be reviewing at Ghost at some point. I have a, a beer from a brewery called Phantom, a Belgian Phantom. brewery. So, um, Phantom Chocolat. But I'm not doing that tonight. I don't, I don't dislike that, but I just don't think there's much to it. Mm. That's not doing a whole lot for me. Having had quite a lot of, like, champagne or brute sour style beers as well, like, that's really not up there for me. Although I do have this murky boy. So yeah, I and, I, and I do have the extra flavour release mechanism. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I've got the the middle the middle ground. I, it's pretty good. It's not as nice as La Roja, um, but I do quite like it. Uh, I, I'm I'm have to admit, I'm quite enjoying this. There's I'm it's, enjoying it. But... It's well, I enjoy. I'm enjoying the subtlety of it. There is a lot of taste initially, but then it it goes fast, but it it leaves you wanting more. I think. And you're it's not, left not with one nothing. where it goes now and you I go have, hmm, whatever. Now I have larger. Tips of it, like you're not left with completely nothing. There's some high there, end. There, in there the is some stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, some sort of, sort of. I think it's almost, it's, it's almost floral high notes in the back. Yeah, it, I mean it's it's got that champagne thing to it. It's uh, so I'm, this I'm is brewed all year round at the brewery, and it has won the Great American Beer Festival uh, twice. Oh. Um, I'm obviously more cultured than you. Then. This one got very <laughs> lots <laughs> of chocolate, <laughs> lots of chocolate <laughs> coins. Um, but not on the label, which is good. We don't like chocolate coins on the label when it doesn't say what they are. It says, for the musically minded, Jeffrey cites a long list of music styles from Latin American to 1980s punk and musicians such as Billie Holiday as his inspirations for the beer. That doesn't mean anything. No, it yeah, means that's just... bullshit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I listen to a lot of stuff. But my, 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 the few beers I've made have been mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best beer you've brewed so far? Uh, Cliff Richard Pale Ale. I don't know the one. With the, the one with the most staying power, I think. The the one we we went back to a lot was was Vicevix, which was where we tried to make. Did, you say, did you say Vicevix? Did it work? <laughs> uh, so we Fair we enough. we we tried make a, a lactose wheat beer. And we wanted the malt base to be Weetabix, but we found that the Weetabix had no fermentable sugars in it. So we chewed, <laughs> we chewed on a lot of different grain and tried to approximate the flavour of a dry Weetabix. <laughs> and then bung that in. Uh, like, it's just me and Cal sat in the living room just going, I think that's part of it. Do you think that's part of it? And then like, just sort of getting a bigger blend and then just go, okay, take a handful of that. Chuck that in. <laughs> yeah. Does that taste like the dry Weetabix? It's like, oh, we'll see. I think that's pretty close. And then we crumbled a load of dry Weetabix, knowing it would do nothing. <laughs> because we bought a load of Weetabix at that point, because we thought it would go there. At this point, it basically sounds like the kind of tale you'll be told when, without the beginning part, but the beginning part is, anyway, me and Cal got really, really, really stoned, and then we decided to make a Weetabix beer, no, really. which involves us... On the munchies, eating vast amounts of different grains, trying to emulate Weetabix. No, nope, we were stone cold sober, <laughs> trying to emulate Weetabix because we realised Weetabix had no fermentation. Was this triggers. before or after doing a Space Jam uh, during, podcast? During. Do you want to plug it? I mean, if, if you... Can you uh, plug I it? Can. Yes, you can. I do a stupid podcast called The Space Jam Continuum where we're trying to make a cohesive cinematic universe. Uh, something that was never meant to be one. Uh, something that was never meant to be Hi, one. Hi, I'm Chris McLennan. <laughs> oh, you do? And I'm Cal Noble. I know who you get. <laughs> get when I can't record. Uh, so we're doing the Looney Tunes universe from 1937 all the way to Space Jam. We're watching every single one that has any principal Looney Tunes characters Space in Jam it. 1 or Space Jam 2? Space Jam 1, but Space Jam 2 has meant we'll go on forever. Also... We're trying to get a credit on Space Jam 2. Uh, <laughs> is, is this, as, is this, as is this either... Point, 
Is this your quite... or assistance to Mr. James? Because <laughs> LeBron James, he's the basketball talent. Have you reached that. out to him yet? Uh, that's that's like really what we're going to be doing every week going forward. <laughs> okay. Six please, degrees of LeBron please, James. Mr. LeBron, please, look, Mr. Please. LeBron, look, we've done your we've we've done your research for you. You've got to take this role seriously. I know you've got the acting chops. You've been in some other things. You've been pretty good. But like, so if you like the cut of Chris's jib, you should look up uh, the Space Jam Continuum on your favourite podcast reader. Uh, I listen on Spotify, um, which I very much enjoy. It's good of you. No, I, I, I basically, yeah, so I very much enjoy your ramblings. Um, and I just, at the moment, I'm just wondering about, oh, look, look what it's open to. <laughs> Speaking of things, there's a beer in the book we have already reviewed, Pab's Blue Ribbon, or Ribbon. It's a classic. It's a classic Pab's Blue Ribbon. It's, it's not, not good, it's shit. but it's a classic. Have you ever had this before? No. Don't. Okay. <laughs> it's it's got an iconic status and it is not a good bit. Like drinking IPA. No, this is like uh uh you know your canoe joke. Um, oh don't say it. Mm-hmm. But that's <laughs> basically your it. canoe joke. What? That that is the closest to water. You've to got to link to another video no, 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 that, no. where Quino says canoe. You, no, you, it's you, just can, rude. you can you can you can absolutely say the beginning of the beer canoe joke. Having sex in a canoe. Is the is no, the, is the joke? No, well, you've, you've you've kind of ruined the gag. You, you should have let me do it, James. <laughs> you 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 are I the you're the only wise to my Eric Morecambe here. You need to watch more YouTube channels, James. Most people would have gone. Uh, if you want to hear Quino's uh, canoe joke, just hey, click here. You can see it. I'm and then you, there'd be a little four. bit that came up there. I'm not very good. Well, go I'm not very professional. <laughs> yeah, I've never meant to be professional. So basically, James is drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon, Ribbon a little bit like having sex in a canoe. No, it's fucking close to water. Yes, it is fucking close to water. Yeah. He's, he's not learnt at all, is it? No. no, it's not like having sex in a canoe, except it is. <laughs> oh I think we'll leave this one there. Yeah, we <laughs> going down a horrible route. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we might see another review. Maybe. Mm. Goodbye.